Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Tuesday CT. I'm Kristen from Magoosh, and today I'm going to talk about a really, really helpful strategy for the ACT math section, even if you have no idea how to do the problem, and that is estimation. Now on the ACT, you have this wonderful gift in front of you. It's the right answer because it's a multiple choice test. So that means that you can often make some eliminations even if you don't entirely know how to do the problem, and you can narrow down your options and take a much better guess, or you'll have much better odds of getting the right answer. And for whatever reason on the ACT, they often throw you the bone of answer choices that are way too big or way too small or completely unrealistic. So if you train yourself to get out of the school mode of just going through and solving math problems and really train yourself to use the answer choices and to use strategic estimation and approximation, you will greatly improve your score, maybe without even really learning to do any math. It's that easy. So let's talk about three ways in which you can use estimation to your benefit on the ACT. So the first way is to eliminate answer choices that are unrealistic. Now you're going to see a lot of word problems on the ACT and oftentimes they're about real world situations and they're pretty realistic and you're not going to find something like a sweater that costs two cents or like nine million dollars. So what you may see is a question like this. So let's go ahead and take a look at this question and talk about how we can use estimation to narrow down our answer choices. Now maybe we won't be able to entirely solve it, but that's okay. We're gonna take a much better guess just by using some estimation. All right, so Margaret finds a $55 shirt on sale for 20% off before a 6% tax. What is the final price of the shirt? All right, so maybe you don't know how to actually solve this problem, how to do the tax and the sale or whatever, but let's take a look at our answer choices. All right, so first of all, we have answer choice A, which is $13.64. Now, a lot of you have probably been to the mall. That would be like a really good sale for a $55 shirt, not a 20% off kind of sale, and then you have to add tax on top of that. So that is just really unrealistic. And where that answer comes from is it's actually the discount and the tax combined. So you can see how if you mess up the calculations, you may get an answer like that and just circle it on the test. But if you use some common sense and use some estimation, you're going to immediately just go and eliminate that one. It can't be that one. Same thing with answer choice E. Now, even though we know tax adds on to the price of something, that's a lot to be adding on, particularly if we're already taking 20% off. I don't think it should be that much more than 55. So we can eliminate that one as being too high as well too. And now we have three answer choices left. So you could stop there and say, I'm gonna guess between these three, but you've eliminated two answer choices. So your odds here are much better than if you were just randomly circling or bubbling in answer choices. But I think we could push this a little bit further. Let's look at answer choice D, which is $58.06. Now we have a $55 shirt, it's 20% off, so we know that's a significant discount. Adding 6% tax back onto that shouldn't be enough after our 20% discount to make it higher than the original price, right? So we can go ahead and eliminate that one too, and then you'll often find this happens a lot on the ACT, you have two answer choices that are pretty close. Sometimes you can actually narrow or estimate down to the right answer, but oftentimes there's gonna be like two that are close and you can't decide and then you need to guess. And that's okay, but that's a pretty good, those are pretty good odds, 50-50, if you didn't know how to do this problem. All right, let's look at number two. Simplifying equations by approximating values. Now let me show you what I mean by that. Here is another sample ACT-like question. All right, so let's say the question tells you that to convert between Fahrenheit and Celsius, here's our equation, Fahrenheit equals nine over five times the Celsius temperature plus 32, and it's asking you to figure out what is 21 degrees Celsius. Now, you might describe your calculator on this one and plug in values, and that's okay, but if it's a more difficult problem, or if you're really quick with numbers in your head, it might be faster for you to do some approximation here. So look at our answer choices, they're pretty far apart, negative 20, 10, 50, 70, 90, and we have something like 21, that's really close to 20, so if we approximate that that's 20 and we plug it into our equation here, we're gonna have calculations, I'll come back to this in a second, so say 21 equals 20, plug that in here, 20 divided by five, that divides really evenly, so we would have four, nine times four is 36, we add that 32, 
come up with 68. Now because 20 is a little bit lower than 21, it's going to be a little bit lower than our answer, which is 70, but there's nothing else that's even close. We have 50, we have 90. So you might be able to just do that in your head and that might be faster for you than plugging in things into the calculator. Or if it's a more complex problem, maybe something with variables, things like that, you might be able to either, once again, narrow it down or figure out the answer choice without having to grab your calculator on something that's really complex by simplifying it a little bit by choosing easier numbers that are close. All right, and finally, number three is to approximate geometry problems. This is one of my favorite strategies on the ACT. So the ACT geometry diagrams that you're gonna see are pretty much roughly drawn to scale. You're not going to come up with ones that are like on the SAT that say they're not drawn to scale. So you can assume they are drawn to scale. So let's say we have a figure like this and the question asks you to find out what's the length of GF, this line right here. So we have some other lines that are marked, this one's 6, this one's 14, this one's 7. Well, a handy little trick is you can take the corner of your answer sheet and you can make yourself, using really light pencil marks on the side, a little ruler here to measure 14, there's a little pencil mark there, you can measure this, 6, and then just put it up against GF, and likely you're going to be able to get at least down to two answer choices, if not to the answer choice just by measuring. Of course, on a question like this, some of your answer choices are probably going to be like 2, or like 25, or something like that, and you can just eyeball it and figure out it's not that. I promise you, if you train yourself to do this on the ACT, you're going to be amazed at how ridiculous some of the answer choices look like if you just use some common sense and focus on using your answer choices to approximate. One more little handy handy trick is if you're dealing with angles, you have a handy right angle on your answer sheet as well too, so you can put that up. Let's say it was asking us to find what's the measurement of angle F here, that can help you eyeball it to see how much more than 90 degrees it is, or less than that. So, a couple handy tricks you can use to take advantage of the fact that the drawings on the ACT are to scale. So, we haven't really done too, too much math in this lesson, but we've been able to narrow down some answer choices quite a bit. And you can do that on the ACT too, just by practicing your estimation and approximation skills. So, I hope that these are some cool little secret tips for you, and you can find more of those in our other Tuesday ACT videos or in our lesson videos at act.magoosh.com.